Hey folks, how's it going? Sadly, the gacha changed at a bit of an unfortunate hour, so couldn't really have checked these characters sooner. But still, Medusa as the new Earth Grand, when basically everyone was expecting Siegfried, is a bit of a surprise. A bit of a big surprise. Also, what is this? Like the third Earth Medusa? With the second new unit going to Sebastian in Dark. Okay, interesting. Uh, let's go check their kits, see what they do. Uh, that's a nice CA, but the sprite honestly doesn't even look that different from the standard Medusa. Uh, still, Grand Weapon, this one has to be the Exalto one. Yeah, Optimus Exalto plus Majesty plus Demolishment. Uh, big Amplified Boost to Earth Normal Attack Damage. I guess that's fine. As for the character herself, yeah, I think they made the chest plate a little bit wider, they made the helmet a little bit longer, but that is still always the Medusa we know. Mele and Staff unit as a primal beast, so charge attack, bloody Medusiana, massive earth damage to a foe, delay, Medusa dodges or attack from foes one time, and bonus earth damage based on resonance level. Actually, not that different from her fire version. Her skill, 10 hitter, damage to random foes, removes one buff from all foes, and raises toxicosis by one on a 6 turn cooldown. Uh, 10 hit might be nice, but we're going to have to check whether she also gets an autocast for this. Impaling Fangs, 900% earth damage to a foe, constricting bite, boost to the specs upon each cast up to a maximum of 3. Attack, defense, debuff resistance and accuracy are lowered, damage taken is supplemented, Okay, Accuracy, Supplemented Damage, actually not that bad. Third skill, Seal all foes actions for one turn, hit to multi-attack rate and accuracy. A second hit to accuracy, but this one also only brings three debuffs on top of the one turn count attack. Capot skills, Pride as a Primal, gain effect in order of the number Primal allies in the party. Attack skill cap, supplement skill damage and cooldown for damage skills when a foe uses a special attack and can recast damage skills once each turn they are cast. This makes her very clicky, uh, this also kind of forces her team to be primal only if you want to use her at the max potential. But yeah, 20 hit damage every time Serpentine Quietus gets off of cooldown as well as 2 stacks of these Impaling Fangs doesn't actually sound all that bad. Now the skill cooldown ends whenever a foe uses a special attack and I guess she works her against herself a little bit because she locks the enemy's actions so that they don't perform a special attack. Uh, also, this one is not a damage skill, so it doesn't get its cooldown reset. But still, on the bright side, it's not a one-time only skill. Second passive, Primal Resonance. Upon receiving a Primal Earth Allies buff or healing skill, raises Medusa's resonance level by 1, up to a maximum of 4. When resonance reaches level 4, ends Primal Earth Allies skill cooldowns one time. Okay, a free chilling. Only for Primal Allies. This one might be particularly cool. Uh, primal Earth Allies gain effect in order of level, boost to defense, water damage reduction, boost to dodge rate, and dispel cancel. Okay, she looks really nice. Uh, mostly a unit set for endgame content, long form content. Uh, content in which it doesn't really matter how many times you have to click skills, because she can get kind of clicky. But I really like the passive buffs that she gets. I really like the resonance, even if it's just one time per battle. And being targeted by a buff or healing skill four times might happen quite early as well. I'm thinking like, if it doesn't happen on turn 1, because you're running a lot of buffs, it might happen between turns 5 or 6, and it's a one time only. So sadly, this one also goes a little bit against the long term usability, with only one reset. Still, boost to defense, water damage reduction, dodge rate and permanent dispel cancel are going to carry the rest of the fight. Uh, sadly, she's not really set up for burst, so I'm pretty sure she's never going to get that 10 out of 10, but she might still be in the 9.8 to 9.9 .9 range. Uh, again, her teams are a little bit limited, if you want to use her properly, you're going to have to use her alongside other Earth Primals, 
but I think the list is actually not that short. Well, you've got Uriel, you've got Setia, uh, not sure how good Yggdrasil is in long-term content, and then there's Alexiel here who just got buffed. Alright, oh, on top of this, uh, Kame should also count as all specs, so you can still run her with Kame Frontline as well. And that's yet another skill reset on Kame too. Yeah, Medusa is actually looking quite alright. I uh, would love to put my hands on her, try her out, especially when it comes to the Nightmare 200s and 250s. Uh, see how big the damage reduction here is, defense plus damage reduction, uh, how much can she keep boosting the survivability of the entire team. Uh, yeah, she looks like another pretty decent full auto unit, either long form content on manual or just a nice full auto unit too. As for Sebastian, finally getting his SSA upgrade as a Sabre unit, passive dark damage to a foe, dodges all attacks from foes one time, while Sanguine Savagery is in effect activates twice. Not another CA unit, come on. Uh, Lupu Saboyeur switch to Sanguine Savagery mode, while well, in effect deal triple attacks, bonus dark damage effect, boost to skill specs, consumes HP to end cooldown for damage skills, both the second and the third one, Hands when almost knocked out. Okay, guaranteed to attack plus echo might actually be pretty damn nice. The only problem is that he needs a skill press for it. Uh, might be a contender in a burst setup with like Tira, who also needs a skill press, but let's face it, Tira is way cuter. When it comes to damage skills, uh, Rapier, Cage, 80, Dark Damage to a foe, Boost to Attack and Defense, Stackable, Supplements Damage, Stackable. Only for himself. That's alright, but not that big a fan. AP Solitaire, Dark Damage to all foes, Hit to Attack and Defense Stackable, and Dispel. Okay, Dispel with a skill cooldown cut, or well, skill cooldown reset, uh, might be really nice for short fights even when enemies buff themselves. But again, his competition is Tira. Passive wise, when Sanguine Savagery is not active, into hiding, restore HP every turn, so he cannot be targeted. And lastly, at battle start, boost to Odalized defense, refresh and debuff immunity for one time. Oh, but not even from the backline? Like, sure, we've been getting a lot of summons that give you debuff immunity at battle start, but some characters have been able to do that too. It's just that most of them have been able to do so from the backline as well. I uh, don't really care about the boost to defense and refresh, but Veil from backline can be useful sometimes. So, at the end of the day, it's a pretty simple kit. Triple attack and echo is really nice, but again, it's on a skill button, so I'm pretty sure he's not going to be able to replace either Tira or better Bowman. Outside of the triple attack and echo, the skill damage might also be quite fine, especially since they reset, but I'm curious to see how much HP he consumes in order to reset this. Yes, he might still be fine in a 3 to 5 turn setup on top of a short burst. Again, if you don't have Bowman, if you don't have Tira, he might be an alright substitute. But other than that, I don't know. Still, being decent for burst is likely going to give him some extra points, but I can't really see him get past the 9.6 barrier. Maybe 9.7 at most, if we, if we want to be generous, if we want to have the burst brain rot going on. Now, as for the banner itself, Sebastian is up at 0.3. I'm uh, pretty sure the rest are going to be other Earth units. Medusa up at 0.3. Oh, they're the only ones. That's weird. Uh, there's no rate up on any other Earth unit in preparation for the United fight. Yeah, it's just Medusa and Sebastian. Still, she carries the Exalto weapon if you care about the Earth meta that is an absolute must pull. I think you'll want at least two of those as it's been the norm for these Exalto tier weapons. But otherwise, yeah, she looks nice, but she doesn't seem like a must have for content clearing. So, let's try and toss a few rolls in here. Oh no, let's not start with Fairy. Uh, I've had very bad experiences starting with a Fairy pool at the early stages of a roll session. Uh, would probably be better to not touch the gacha, keep saving for some Halloween limiteds, especially since my earth is so down in the dumps, I'm pretty sure I will not be able to even compete at a low level in the next Jalen fight. 
I might be trying Gridwise, but yeah, no, the characters are definitely not accompanying me. Ah, that was a pretty big loading time. Could you maybe be lying to me? Please lie to me. Well, the crystal lied, but that's not a new unit. Ah, uh, Rainbow Liar, this is Kupitan. Okay, there we go. That's what I like to see. So, can we actually luck out once again and get the new grand unit with YOLO rolls before a guild war? Come on, Medusa. Nah, that's a double, but there's no new SSRs. I got the summon. And... Truer. Oh well, you can't really win them all. Looks like a little bit of a weak leg fest. Again, the best part about this one is going to be the exalt weapon for Earth players, but I'm still on Magna, not really a big fan of Medusa herself, and Earth as an element for me has been in shambles basically ever since that big the game up. I've uh, never really been willing to invest into the element in order to keep clearing more and more content. Just got lucky with a few characters, but these are not even going to be enough for the United Fight. United Fight which is coming up next week, and I still haven't done any preparation for it. So, yeah, I guess that's going to be it for me for the moment. As always, thanks a lot for watching, good luck with your rolls if you try and pull Medusa for the United Fight, and see you guys around soon. Ciao!